Tonight it's time for me to move from Java to HTML5. Now, is that a good idea? Well, I should say that this is kind of beta, all right? And the hoops you have to jump through to get Java to work, whitelisting, uh, moving security down, you know, those days are numbered, hopefully. And I had an article about that actually here, March 8th. Yay! Saying that Supermicro is testing HTML5 UI. Still can't mount ISO files. So I'll just point that out. And here's a more recent article in June saying we're getting closer. And then some you know tweets going back and forth with me and Supermicro. Now the gist of it is, uh, well, my bias is a little older. It's time for a refresh here. So I'm going to go to the latest versions. And you'll see that in a moment here. Just finishing up with this conversation, we've got some comments from somebody named Joe saying, um, you know, here's the firmware, that they tried it, and that it actually worked. So they gave me the confidence, because Supermicro had not answered if 3.3 was safe. Uh, what Joe did was actually kind of shared a procedure here. So I shared the actual download and so forth um, of how we actually get the file. Now, by the time you watch this video, hopefully you just go to the product page. Hopefully you'll just go to the product page. But for now, I've got a, a direct link to just grab that file. So it's actually coming from this support page. And these X10 motherboards that we're on right now just don't have it. Let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the product page for Supermicro Mini Tower. Or motherboard, doesn't really matter. When you click on BIOS, the current version, is 1.1a. I believe I already grabbed that file. Let me make sure if I hadn't already. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got the two files, the BIOS and the IPMI. Now, if you back arrow here, that was the BIOS, how about IPMI? Today, July 26th, still 3.2. 2.6, not the 3.31 we're about to try. All right, so I'm being a little bit, a little bit bold here. All right, next piece. If we read carefully here. What this person says, they give a little procedure. Right here. Reset to default after the update. Plug out the power cord for a minute. And um, so that's the advice in the sequence. Now I'm actually going to do my BIOS upgrade first. I'm partly getting ready for these super servers, these little ones that are arriving as soon as tomorrow. And those are going to have later biases. So I want to um, have the latest on my original mini tower. Okay. So updating right here is my procedure. I have a video. I tell you to download the two. Um, I walk you through it and basically I say, let's use Rufus to create Rufus. So let me stick a USB key in. Um, this video is gonna be a little rough around the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna use the latest Rufus I have. It's from early July, version 2.9. And it's gonna struggle because it's not gonna find any USB media at the moment. So I need to stick a USB drive in. All right, that's done. You heard the little recognition tone. And free DOS. Notice it says free DOS by default. So this 32 gig sand disk is ready as is. Just to be extra sure, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I did it correctly here. And this one has a screenshot. So we can compare and not go for memory or defaults as new versions come out over the years. Looks perfect. Other than cluster size, I'm going to leave that alone and not worry a hoot about it. Uh, that's it. So here we go. It's going to very quickly lay down free DOS. Okay, so now we got that going. And then talks about extracting the files. So let's 
Let me bring up the downloads folder. And I'm going to go ahead and extract the bias download image. Okay, so what I'll want to do is get that file. Hang on, I got a bunch of clutter. Okay, so we got just the two files in question. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that thing. And the directions tell me all I need is this flash file, this 909 file. All right, or all the files in my case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. They're tiny. Right click, send to, and you should be able to send them. Oops, let me show you that on camera here. Right click, send to, and you can just send them right to this F drive I just created. All right. So let's have a look at the F drive. And now there's a bunch of stuff on the root of it. All right, that's the gist of preparing for a BIOS upgrade. So um, after I put those files on there, uh, it tells me about UEFI mode and getting into dual mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Remember, I want to eject the tray icon, eject the drive, it pops up saying it's okay to go ahead and remove the device now. So now I've got the drive in hand, let me go stick it in the machine, be right back. Okay, that's done. The machine's actually uh, powered off, I believe, right now. Um, should be. So I shut down ESXi gracefully and I popped out the USB key for ESXi and I replaced it on the front bezel with this flash media we just created. Okay, so you can see the uh, little annoyance of Java and the multiple questions to answer. I'm going to go ahead and power on the machine. Let me speed up this segment of video a bit so you can um, get to the part where I tweak the BIOS setting. So if you haven't done this already, you want a better quality display for your IPMI. So what's the bias setting I'm talking about here? Right here, if you're in UEFI, go back to dual mode, the factory default mode. So I'm gonna hit delete when prompted, or when you hear a beep, to get in, and simply change to dual mode. Now there is something called CSM that can give people some issues as well. So why don't I just cover that while the bias is coming up. Okay. Okay, so now I need to hit F11, sorry, delete to get into the bias and looks like I got in little trouble with window sizing. So let me just kind of fix that there by closing the Java applet, get that thing back going. Okay, so we now have a bias screen. All right, I do talk about that a little bit right here. If your BIOS won't boot properly, ensure CSM is turned on. So if you've been benchmarking or digging into those settings, something to be aware of. You may have trouble booting. For most people, you just got to change this one setting. This is the way it's shipped from Supermicro. makes it very easy to deal with ESXi and any other modern OSs, um, Linux variants, and so forth. But for booting from legacy media like this DOS we're trying to boot from, you're going to want to do what I just did. Okay, so now we reset. So what I'm going to need to do is hit F11 to choose a boot device for this next boot only. So again, uh, we'll speed up this segment of video until there's something a bit more exciting to show you. And while that's going, um, I'll just put, leave it on this screen. So this is my IPMI. This is my out-of-band management. I'm at 326, as we talked about earlier in the video. I'm trying to go to 331. My bias is at 11. I want to go to bias 11A, which is the current version available on the website. 
I'm thinking 1.2 or 1.1b, something will probably come out soon, and I'll probably find out what that is on these machines arriving tomorrow. So generally in a new ZND arise from Supermicro, it arrives with a newer bias than anything in the field, and there's no place to download it. Within a month or two, it's downloadable for that new model server on its you know, support website, and the other machines can then match it because they also get a download available. All right, so I hit F11 on the left to invoke the boot menu. And looks like maybe I missed it, but I got into the bias anyway, so where I can select boot order. So same as F11, little secret under save and exit, you can just pick a boot device right there. No need to reboot again. All right, I'm at the command line. Now, I know I bounced around quite a bit. Like I said, this video is not that polished. It's not really for everybody. It's for people that are kind of, you know, beta testing. But basically, if we do a dir, okay, now we know the commands. Not hard. Flash. X, 10, hit tab, and it fills out the rest for me. Now we just wait. Firmware update is happening. So it's not the most elegant firmware update procedure. It's kind of uh, old school. But you know what? It's going to work. I'm not booting over the wire. I'm not relying on Gibbet, and it's certainly not relying on Wi-Fi. I'm relying on a USB locally attached device to get this somewhat delicate operation done with less risk of breaking my valuable machine. Okay, so at this point, I'll just speed up the video until this sucker is done. And the screenshot here gives me a sense of what to expect. And then we'll move on to IPMI upgrades. Okay, so that finished, took about five minutes. And notice, unplug the power cord and power back on. That's what I've been doing. So I'm gonna stick with that routine. And unplug the power cord. Now, if you wanna feel better about inking a power on, a, on unit, you can do this first, and then yank out the power cord. So I'll be right back, yanking out the cord now. Hang on. Okay. Went down there, I pulled out the cord for 15 seconds, plugged the power cord back in. There is no power physical switch on the back to really yank juice on the system. So you do have to yank the power cord out. Now that I've reapplied power, I can turn on IPMI and it's gonna fail. That's normal, you gotta re-authenticate, right? So this whole page is gonna be down. And it takes a little while for IPMI to come back up after you remove all power to the motherboard. So I set aside the DOS flash Upgrade USB media, and I put ESXi USB key back in there, ready for later on. So, again, it's going to take a little while for the motherboard to respond and to allow me to log back into IPMI. But what we should see is 1.1 should become 1.1a soon enough here. Notice I didn't actually have to hit refresh. All right, we're back in. And 1.1 is showing. It's because probably, since we haven't powered on yet, hard to say if there's any concern whatsoever. Let me fire up Java again. Okay, so on the right, it's a little confused about status because it doesn't even know the system is on yet. So let's hit refresh. It did say on, sorry about that and 1.1a, so we're at the latest bias. Got that goofy resizing stuff going on, let me just take care of that right now. Takes a little while to close the Java applet. I'm very keen on trying HTML5. You're gonna see me try it for the very first time in front of you. Again, a key feature though, mounting ISOs remotely is missing in this initial go of it that Supermicro has done, but certainly on the right track to dump Java. All right, now I don't actually want to boot ESXi. So I kind of just want to pause things. How about I hit the F11 key? No. How about I hit the 
delete key to look through settings of the BIOS. So when we have a new BIOS, there might be a surprise or two in there, a change in behavior, a change in the way it looks. Okay, not sure what happened there, but while we're waiting for a video, let me, uh, Again, this person is talking about, you know, removing the power cord, right? Cold start the server. So it booted a second time. And that's normal. After an upgrade, um, by, it looks like <laughs> NumLock is off. One of the defaults that's kind of horribly annoying. So if I go here, recommended bias settings are all laid out for me. Not just you know screenshots or words, but an actual video I could follow along with, screen for screen. So when this bias finishes on the left, I'll be able to follow along screen for screen on the right. So I'm waiting. Now, when I recorded this, it was a little bit older IPMI and BIOS, and you'll see now they wisely put the IP address right on the screen. So you know what to hook your browser up to when you have a new super server. Good move. Okay, I wanna keep that full screen, but I can slide this to the right. All right, there we go. Delete key, entering setup, that's a good sign. Okay, so now we can just wait for this on the right to catch up. And we're ready to follow along. Um, again, trying to make sure that's not resized. All right, it's as clear as it's gonna be, I guess. A little odd that it's got some blur there. So if we go on this video and look around, boot, I'd wanna go back. Okay, this, yep, they have me restore opt optimized defaults. You know what? That's a good idea. But before I do that, there's gonna be people watching this video that just want life to move on. They wanna update the firmware and then go right back to you know ESXi or whatever they were doing before with the system. So let's just check if anything significant changed. The only things I change are boot features, turning NumLock off, and it looks like it sorted that back to factory default. AC power, I had that on off. And in stuff, okay, so it looks like it's already taken care of going to factory defaults for me. And then say to configuration, I change things from, um, make sure they're on a SSD for drives that are SSDs. And then finally on the boot menu, I turn on IPMI. So I'm gonna just follow along verbatim and say, restore optimized defaults, yes. And like the screen on the right, I'm not gonna take any shortcuts. I'm gonna simply save changes and reset. Okay, entering setup. Now I can resume playing the video. Head over to advanced, boot feature. Unlock off. I like to hold it for four seconds until it will turn off. And then finally, mine, I want to stay off. This is for you know, power outage reasons. Pick the wrong one, there we go. All right, hit escape, head on down to SATA config. And here I just go through and look for drives. This is a 10 terabyte drive. And that's certainly not an SSD. That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> OCZ Vertex though, that's older. Just migrating some data off of that. Um, SATA 3 has nothing, and 850 over here, that's also an SSD. I'm not really sure how much the screen matters. I've never seen a difference one way or the other. So now I've got my SSDs flagged as SSDs in the BIOS. Okay, I hit escape. When I've proofread all my work, and all of them are hit, done. Okay, now I can go to the right. I told you I don't change much. I change from dual, huh, set a prompt timeout went away. I 
I change that over to UEFI, and over on the right, I explain why that is. Again, it makes VMware simpler to install, and it actually works quite nicely with modern OSs, anything released in like the last two years. Okay. And then, sorry, back on boot, I go in and I say the first device should be UEFI SanDisk. I then save changes and reset. Now, over here, I'm just going to save changes. I'm not going to reset quite yet. I just want to look around if anything has changed. So boot features we already looked at together. CPU, anything change? Seems like no. CSM is buried somewhere in there. Just showing you all the goodies. Now it's possible they've changed something to make this a little easier to be a workstation and get an S3 state where you can go to sleep. But it's really a server-focused machine. So let me just leave it at that. All right, chipset, Northbridge. Whipping through these. VTD on, OK. So no, that's good. Memory. The expected speed, 21 through 3. 2400 might be in the next support. But 2.2, uh, sorry, 1.1a one does not seem to support 2400 natively yet, even though Supermicro has updated their website to indicate that seems to be their plan on most of their ZNDs. Continue to whip through here. SRIV support is off by default, but you can turn it on, which is cool. Some people say you really want to turn this on to UEFI. I don't see any difference in speed in any of that. I could be wrong. And um, you can turn off the option ROM here and just say disabled and shave a little bit off your boot time. So that's one enhancement, but I'm going to stick by the book because I don't know what you're doing with your machine. I'm going to leave that alone, changing as little as possible. Serial port, some people might disable that if you're not using. All right. And finally, ACPI. Let's look at that a little longer. Okay, event logs, IPMI, security, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're good. So now I'm ready to save changes and reset. And ESXi is going to start booting. But I don't really want it to because I still have an IPMI to configure. So we got through all this good stuff. And now we're ready for our IPMI. Okay, so the bias. You want to make sure it finishes post. I'll see ESXi start, and then I'm going to forcibly just power off on the left. For okay, so that's just me being sure that my BIOS boot order is set. UFI is going; it finds a USB key, and that I'm going to be off to the races as soon as we're done with this last bit of administration, and that is to update the IPMI as well. I'll point out a few BIOS system from Supermicro, um, or the shift from Supermicro. Well. You don't necessarily know what bias they're going to be at. Might be the latest. A reseller called Wired Zone that I'm using um, for these referral links. Well, they do the upgrades for you. So if you buy one of these bundles, you don't have to worry about these upgrades. They're done for you. But of course, you might be watching this video many months later. That's what I'm trying to do. Is help you through that. All right, there comes VMware, just like I said. So I'm comfortable that we're done. So IPMI, what's the advice? Well, come on. There. What's the advice? Well, they flash it and then they say, leave it off uh, for a whole minute. It helps to plug. So this person really said a minute. Um, I think I did like 30 seconds when I did my first one. And here I am talking. I say intermittent mode. So let's, let's go and do all that. Explaining how to update the, buy the uh, IPMI. And let me just resize Windows so you can see everything in one place. There we go. Maintenance firmware update. Maintenance 
firmware update. Enter update mode. Click OK. And follow the instructions. Now, it also talks about uncheck both boxes when prompted. Okay, so IKVM croaked, that's expected. And here's the prompts. Browse our way to the firmware file. And we have Redfish. Okay, that is very wrong. What you really want to do is extract that. It's the bin file you're going to need. Okay, so now we can go into Redfish folder and now we can see a bin file. That's the gist of it. Let's check out that PDF just in case there's something exciting in there. Gosh, no. It's just about Redfish and APIs. Exciting if you're trying to do automation, not so much about the upgrade process. How about this doc? Let's check that out. Okay, browse your way to the firmware file. And does their screenshot actually show a bin? That would be uh, wise. Um, Uncheck preserve confirmation, very important. So yes, as people have told me, the directions actually tell you it's really important to uncheck those. Then start the upgrade and come back. All right, so I think we're good to go here. Upload the firmware. And right there, uncheck both boxes when asked to preserve your confirmation. All right configuration. So I'm glad that's documented right in their software. How big is this bundle? Are you, are you actually going to see it being shoved over the wire? The answer is no. It's long since, oh, the answer is yes. Um, only 11 megabits. So it doesn't push at a very uh, fast rate and it's done. And we're ready to move on and turn off both these checkboxes as we are warned. And now we just wait. Okay, we waited for a minute. Remember it says the config will get reset. Pull out the power cord for a minute. And then reapply. So I'm going to go do that now. I'm not even going to bother trying to do IPMI or any kind of management. I'm just going to yank the power cord at this point. Okay, power was removed for a minute. Power is back on. Let's see what happens if I can get back into IPMI here. But I only powered on yeah, less than a minute ago. So you're going to see the browser attempt to log in and then finally succeed at giving me the login prompt. And at that point, we'll see what level of code we're at, both BIOS and IPMI. And we'll know whether or not we succeeded. Now, things like alerting to reboots to your email account, stuff like that in IPMI, you'll need to set up again if you didn't save all that. So I'll just point that out. My machine's actually only two months old, and I didn't actually have all that set up in this particular system. So I'm not too worried about that. And the articles do... The uh, Word doc from Supermicro does warn you you're going to lose your settings. Just pointing that out. All right, here we go. Okay, the host is off. Redfish is showing. Firmware 331. And bias level doesn't actually show, which is a little weird. Now what happens... If I click here, it still invokes Java. So I'll need to figure out um, how do we do the HTML5 UI. I'll need to look into that. I 
I think it's time to power on. Obviously, we didn't do anything with the bias just now. We already know that succeeded earlier. So I'm in very good shape and ready to continue about going about my business with uh, ESXi 6.0 update 2. And probably the first thing I'll check is just to make sure health status still shows fine. RPM speed of the fans, temperatures, that stuff. But uh, again, I'm confident everything went well here. Um, certainly do want to check out HTML5. Ooh. Okay, that's not quite what I meant to do there. So hitting F5 in the left wasn't really brilliant. You're supposed to use the refresh button in the upper right. Sorry about that. Had I used refresh here, it would have worked better. All right. There it is. IKVM HTML5. Nice. First time. There we go. This happens to be Firefox. Probably should use Chrome. Current one doesn't support for video. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. It's telling me to use Chrome. So that kind of hints already that Firefox might not be the way to go for this. But it's working. And there comes VMware. And do a little reset. It's clear. I like that. Crystal clear. All right. Time for Chrome. So let's get a copy of Chrome going here. And let's try our first HTML5 session on Chrome. And um going to get those nasty warnings, of course. Go ahead and kill this session off. Probably should have clicked log off. Doesn't really matter too much. At this point, just highlighting the new IPMI, and giving folks a look at the new remote control option right here. You can also click on the left. Can launch it here. Not sure what size window it's picking or how it's picking that, but there we have it. So I can kind of minimize that. And interesting. Something happened with my boot sequence there and it didn't pick up and boot ESXi. Uh, okay, a little bit distracting, but anyhow, let's see what happens this next boot. We have a virtual keyboard, that's nice. We have recording capability. What the heck? All right, not a whole lot happening for the recording there, but presumably it's going to ask me where do I want to save that file? Yes. And it's a web um, file. Weird. What can we do with that file? And there you go, complete with mouse motions. Pretty cool. All right, I'm not gonna touch anything. Let's just watch this boot, hopefully succeed. Uh, it acted like uh, a UEFI boot that didn't find bootable media is what that screen looked like on that second boot. Whoa. All right, well, I guess I get my chance to Go into the bias so I can reset power from there. What else can I do? Let's go left to right. Macro, Marco, <laughs> there's a typo. Uh, special characters I'd want to learn. F2 and F12 for VMware. We want to get those out of the way. Preference, display skill, image quality. Let's, let's crank it, let's see what happens there. Wow, this is interesting. So if you're on, if you're bandwidth uh, constrained, you can adjust that. Um, hotkey settings. Uh huh. I don't see F2. Uh, adjust mouse, Control Shift F2. So yeah, those shouldn't get in the way. So those defaults for hotkeys look good. What else? 
full screen mode, hot play. I'm not going to mess with those right now. Okay, that just simply saves a file. Okay, let's get into tab or delete key. Excuse me, not tab. What am I talking about? Did I hit delete key on time? Did it get passed through to the system? I have no idea. Apparently not. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, all right. Now I might want to try the soft keyboard next time and hit delete there. Uh, I shouldn't have to though. I just was probably a little bit late. Power control looks the same. How about help? Help brings up a little bit of uh, information about this HTML5. So the big thing missing again, can't mount an ISO. So for like day-to-day -day use, sure, this seems good, but obviously that's not so good that you can't mount ISOs quite yet. Temperatures and all that stuff not showing up because the machine's in the middle of booting. That is business as usual. I do wish this window could size itself to the resolution, but okay. So it's not going to try to rescale it unless I change this stuff. Come on, did I do it again? Come on. I hit delete, it turned weird blue because I accidentally moved the mouse while clicking and that probably means it missed my keystroke again. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, well, at least I gave you a full look here. I'm not gonna torture you with watching yet another reboot. Um, speed, uh, I'm just gonna pause the recording right now. Okay, I've resumed. Getting my mouse focused there, hitting delete over and over. And if it doesn't work, it looks like I'll just need to use a soft keyboard to have reliable uh, ability to get into the BIOS. Wow. All right, so my theory here is the BIOS is back on factory defaults. You know, three strikes are out or three attempts at booting, fail, it puts you at defaults. Now I'm going to test that theory by hitting delete on the soft keyboard this time. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, it should be ready real soon. You're going to see me clicking on the delete key, the soft key, to hopefully pass through and get in the BIOS successfully this time. All I'm trying to do is get in the BIOS setup and see what's wrong with my boot order. I'm going to hit delete key there before the screen even finishes painting properly. I'm hitting it like a madman over and over. Hmm. So now I've got some troubleshooting to do. Just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and turn off ad blocking for this domain. So now if I just hit refresh here, see what happens. F5 does not obliterate that session. No idea if the keyboard is going to work any better. If this time fails, I'm going to head back over to Java just to get into the BIOS to see what is going on. Can I do the Java applet as well? I don't know. So the answer appears to be yes, that you can run both the uh, Java and the HTML5 versions at the same time. Kind of a weird thing to do, but hey. Let's see if my keystrokes make it through over on the left side. So didn't do too well with the soft keys. Gonna give it one more shot, delete, nope, nothing. When I hit delete over here, it said entering setup right away. So, yeah, I seem to be having keystroke problems on Chrome on HTML5. I'll have to do some more troubleshooting. Maybe I'll try, I don't know, Edge Browser. Why the heck not, right?
So now we're kind of done with the Chrome thing there. So this is Microsoft Edge browser. And let's see how it does. Spawned a window. Now, does it have a virtual keyboard that works? Like if I move the arrows around, it does. So I don't know. All right, bias. Are we at factory default? So we go to boot features. Does it have numlock off? Numlock off, stay off. Um, so it did not reset to factory defaults, clearly. All that stuff looks fine. And let's check out this. What has gone wrong there? UEFI USB key. It's not seeing the sand disk. It's like it's been ejected. I think the brand showed earlier and now it doesn't. So do we somehow lose that USB port or something. I don't know. I'm just going to eject the drive and plug it back in. We'll see what happens here. And uh, for good measure, let's just power cycle. Right back. I'm back. Let's hit delete there. See if the soft key worked. Didn't. So what do you do when something's buggy? You reboot. In this case, I just unplugged the USB media. The red light was on. It was like constantly seeking ESXi. So we're good now. We're back in action. Don't quite know what to make of the soft key stuff, but what we really should be doing is this. I don't give up easily. I don't want to give up easily. And I want to show you some troubleshooting. And that would be here. Let's just try bumping IKVM. Not IP my itself, just IKVM. Let's see what happens. So maybe we'll have better luck this time. Okay, restarting Java and getting the Edge browser back again too. Confusing, I know. Sorry about that. Forget the virtual keyboard, just hitting delete. It worked. Okay, so IKVM needed a kick in the pants. You saw that, right? Entering setup right away, first hit. You may have even heard me slam the keyboard, the delete key. It works. So, now IKVM is fine. And my machine is fine. And as you saw, I'm going to discard changes and exit because nothing's changed. Ready to just cruise on over to ESXi. Video quality looks good. Got a certificate error, that's expected. Let's see. Virtual storage, anything change in there for plugging in ISOs? Nope, doesn't look like that code changed at all. So did any of this IPMI code stuff change? Seems like enhanced high, no, that stayed. Seems like the answer is no. Is the quality different between these two? And what happens if I try display scaling? Okay, it's instant and it's instantly fuzzy. How about if we remove every fourth pixel, like a number like 75, there is none. Okay, how about 50? That's not so bad. If I hit control and spin the mouse wheel, I can now zoom. That's really kind of crazy. All right, let's go back to 100. Get it back to pixel perfection, and there it is, crystal clear. All right, so the two displays look identically good. Uh, F2, so this key functions in VMware where you want to be able to uh, reboot and do stuff from the local user interface. Let's see how those do. Can I hit F2 by default in the HTML5 one? 
The answer is yes. That's good. How about F12? Can I hit that? So I hit escape, hit F12, and there's no problem. So this HTML5 has no directions I need to tell people how to run it <laughs> um, under VMware or to remap F2 and F12. They're just good to go by default. So that's a big step forward. So nice job, Supermicro, or, uh, or whoever's watching this video. I'm liking that already. And I think we're done. We showed a whole lot of remote control stuff. I suppose to close this down, I'll just very quickly whip through the various IPMI options to see if anything significant came along besides this Redfish uh, API compatibility as well as HTML5, which were huge features, but check out the other stuff. And all my hardware info, server health. Okay, temperatures, RPM show, those are the stock fans, stock voltages, everything looks normal in green. We're going to want to check that in VMware as well. There's no events logged. Whole lot of stuff here. We have SNTP auth, dynamic DNS, on and on and on. NTP you'll want to set, so forth. Fan mode. Same modes as has been there. Remote control, we showed you. Virtual media. floppy disk and CD image. So watch this. Let's try to mount some media. Over window share. Yeah, this is kind of silly. A little too much setup to just mount. I think you'd probably just use Java to mount an ISO for now until HTML5 catches up. Okay, lastly I said ESXi, let's check how it looks. So we're gonna log in to ESXi and see how hardware health looks. And for grands, we could actually do a vCenter login as well. Okay, I don't know if vCenter's actually started or far enough along in the boot process to be ready for us, but we'll find out soon enough. Well, it looks like it is, cool. All right, let's get going here with hardware health. So, when they've changed BIOSes in the past, I did notice some behavior once that was a little ugly. It was a little before this particular system made it on the VMware compatibility list or hard, VMware uh, HCL is what most people would call the acronym for a hardware compatibility list. They call it a compatibility guide, I believe. Oh, whatever you want to call it. it. Looks like it's seeing all the gigahertz and the specs in the machine, but this is the screen we really want to look at. And it looks like they nailed it. No problems. Everything looks just fine. That is a relief. Because again, I said there was one other version. I think it might have been beta. I'm not sure. I tested a lot of stuff. There were some problems here, and it didn't present very well. So that's a good sign. So this HTML5 should be nice and snappy, and it also has a health view that just is not as mature as the vSphere client that's going away soon enough. So we really want to get used to using this, just not quite, quite all there yet. All right. So, there's the system, CPU, all that good stuff shows. How about manage hardware? Systems on high performance, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then monitor hardware. That's where I really meant to go. Everything looks good, just not the fanciest UI for all that. But it works. Same temperature, same voltages, and everything. All right, minimizing all that stuff. I think I've shown you everything at this point. We have successfully gone through a BIOS and IPMI hardware upgrade. Uh, upgrade.
This video shouldn't change when IPMI um, 3.31 Redfish, when that comes out for everybody, the only thing that'll change in the video is that page where I show you where to download it from. Everything else should stay the same. So that's a wrap. I think this video is a keeper. Hopefully helpful to people that own Supermicro Super servers based on the ZND. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to visit tinkertry.com again and follow what happens with the latest new ZNDs in the ever-growing ZND 1500 family. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.